From the Studio 13 Studios in Splendor, Texas, Hank's Think Tank is brought to you by Buster Brown Propane. Quiet on set. Picture is up. All right, roll sound. Rolling. Roll cameras. Cams rolling. And three, two. Hey everybody, what's going on? And welcome to Hank's Think Tank. Um, got a great guest in today, and I'm really happy about this because this is the beginning of political season, and we always have a lot of good conversations. We get to know who's in our community and who's active and what they're doing. And uh, so I'm happy to introduce Craig Mixon today. He is our New Caney Independent School District School Board Trustee, Position Two. He has been running three terms now, and he's running again for a fourth. And uh, Craig has been instrumental in doing a lot of things with the school board that have been positive, and we're going to get into all those. Before we do, however, I'd like to introduce our illustrious co-host. His name is Mark Hogan, and he has the worst car in all of the United States of America. You you hate that car, and I don't know why. You're never riding in it again. Oh, okay. Midnight Black Dodge Challenger 5.7 Hemi. Well, there you go. That's Mm -hmm. why I hate it. (laughs) So, Craig, welcome aboard. Good to have you. Um, I know that you just started your campaign. When exactly did you kick off? Uh, I guess probably about five days ago, maybe. Five days ago. So it's fresh and new. And when's when's, uh, Election Day? Election Day is going to be November 7th, uh, beyond Tuesday, November 7th. And uh, I don't know that the early voting dates have actually been posted just yet. Yeah, I don't think they have. I yeah. looked the other day, and I didn't see them, and I don't think they'd post them over a holiday weekend. I expect so. them somewhere probably around October 20th to, yeah. to have kind of been in there. So Yeah, that's great. Mm. Okay, so um, let's talk about New Caney Independent School District itself before we get into all the board stuff. Mm-hmm. So the district has grown a lot, as, as the whole area has. Do you know how many students we have about? Now, what's what's the average number, I guess? Roughly, we're sitting ar- around 18, I think it's 18.9, 18,900. Uh, that is hard to believe for New Caney. Well, what's really yeah. interesting is that our first day of school, we were just over 18,000. We've already grown 900, roughly around 900 students from the first day of school, which was August 7th, I believe, or uh, there at the beginning. Wow, of why are they still filtering in? I mean, <laughs> people are moving so fast, and here There's they a are, couple huh? of factors, I think, that... Uh, that have to do with that, but uh, there are uh, kids that are moved. There are some um, that uh, don't start till certain times, basically because uh, cultural differences, I believe, or like where they're coming back from. Uh, we do have a very large Hispanic population. Well, they're going to be making that time up, I'm assuming. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Wow. So this is your you're in your third term, and this will be your fourth. You're going for your fourth, is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. My fourth term. And how long are terms? Three years. They're three year yeah. terms. Wow. Each so one's you've been a on the board a good long time. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's flown by. Uh, it, it, I guess you know, nine years is you know, a good amount of time. But um, you know, it has flown by. There's been a lot of a lot of things that we've been through. You know, in the past nine years. That, oh yeah. Uh, I mean. You chalk up COVID to COVID clowns, all kinds of oh, that was interesting. Big, that was the big bubble, wasn't it, right there? Yeah, yeah. It was, so uh, when you first got in, do you remember how many kids there were back then? Uh, there's 18 now. I mean, just a rough number. I believe like around 14. Oh, wow. Yeah, I so think new, we were pushing so like 30. doubled. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, jeez. Wow. It's, um, I want to say it was probably around like 6 to 7% growth uh, each year. I know when I got on the board, we had done some demographic studies. And, uh, you know, we look at those conservative uh, numbers, and that, that's how we try to plan, you mm-hmm. know, to, to plan schools. Plan you yeah, you've got to yeah. keep building all the time. <clears throat> and, and you do. What's, uh, what's difficult about that is you never know what the economy is going to do. You know, does, is it a downturn? You know, you're trying to plan on putting schools in place, you know, while kids potentially could be coming. If you don't get them on the ground, you know, then the kids, you know, you know don't have – uh, great facilities they don't have somewhere you know potentially to go you have crowded schools uh so you know we've also got to pay attention so that we don't overbuild you yeah know? but uh you know in new caney ISD, i think we've done a good job of you know maintaining the right size high schools uh it's just uh you know how fast this community continues to grow do we you know how many more we've got to put down and quickly so how many schools does the district have right now 
Uh, I believe it is 14 elementaries, uh, three middle schools, and two compre- or three comprehensive high schools and, and an early college. Wow. So... Now, what's a comprehensive high school? Is it the same as just a regular high school? Yeah, that's, okay. that's your regular high school. Okay, uh, our early college high school is, yeah. you know, it's a, a much smaller campus uh, specific to uh, college course material. Uh, okay. Kind of career-driven kind of uh, apprentice college? The, the, the goal there actually is uh, that these students, you know, to graduate with an associate's, it's generally, I think, like about a week before they actually graduate with their high school diploma. Oh, that's awesome. So, um but, you know, that campus isn't necessarily – it's not having your football teams, your bands, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, – Okay, yeah. And those students uh, that are on that campus, uh, they've done, you know, some amazing things. And they, they know that, you know, when they're going into it. And, uh, you know, it's been a great program, you know, for, uh, for those kids. And it's amazing to see what they, what they can do really quickly. You know, a lot of those kids wouldn't have opportunities, uh, you know, for uh, – D1 type acceptance and, you know, coming in with your associates, I mean, you move right. quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and y'all have got a great stadium over there at Valley Ranch, too, and that thing's got a big pool and, and all that. So when did when did all that come about? That was during your term, right? That was something y'all had to put on the table? and No, no the stadium? Yeah, the stadium. No, the that? stadium was actually already, uh, was already in place uh, when I started back in 2014. Really? Because it seems mm. so new to me for some reason. <laughs> it, we, it has been taking, uh, taken care of very well, wow. uh, you know, but yeah. uh, no, that was already in place. Okay. Yeah, it's a great place. So, guys, if you haven't been there, you need to go check it out. Uh, yeah, we were right in that. football season. There's, I think this last week we had our, uh, our annual battle line football game. Yeah. It's always a, uh, a great experience to see, you know, two communities, you know, for one night. Yeah. Is that a, at a rivalry, you know, and the next day we're, we're back to one community. And that's, that's what I love about the area. Okay, so being on the board as long as you've been, um, it's obvious that you've probably championed a few things. So can you think of anything off the top of your head that you've kind of instituted or, or helped to put together at least? You know, I, I think I would go back to, you know, when I got on the board in 2014 uh, and, and can, you know, kind of campaigned uh, towards this as uh, being a, a more transparent board, you know, mm-hmm. uh, putting things out like uh, whether it be through video, media or, or social medias. And uh, we were able to uh, start getting our board meetings, you know, recorded, mm-hmm. put onto a YouTube page, things like or it That's wasn't important. much longer yeah. past, you know, that the, the, the state legislature, you know, required that. But, now, you know, we we were there before, you mm-hmm. know, uh, that was yeah. a requirement. And it is important to be transparent with what we're doing. Right. Oh, yeah, be absolutely. transparent, spend and, the taxpayers' dollars. People mm-hmm. want to see what's going on with uh, their public <laughs> servants. I mean, you, you work for us, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I could use a beer, but that's okay. We'll <laughs> talk about that later. And, and not only that, but I think it makes it more inclusive for people who can attend. Mm-hmm. So if you have a, a, a certain part of the population that's handicapped mm-hmm. or for some reason constrained in one way or another and unable to attend those meetings, they can always attend it on YouTube. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's a great deal, you yeah. know, because it, it's 100% inclusivity, I guess you could say. Yeah. Which is a great thing. Well, yeah, the community definitely needs to, you know, to know what happens, you know, in those meetings and, and what we're, uh, the business that we're dealing with. I would also, you know, encourage people, you know, uh, I'll, I'll say the probably the first four years I was on, we maybe had one person come and address the board. Mm-hmm. And I was just kind of floored by that. Uh, it's like it, that with it, most boards. You'd be surprised. Well, you know, it you know? doesn't. Uh, it doesn't always have to be something negative, right? You know, it, it could be something to come and address positive. And we have we've had had parents, you know, uh, over the last year or two years, you know, they come up and they they just want to address the board they, t- to you know highlight something that they they thought you know went well. Mm-hmm. It is an open forum to come and just you know speak. Right. Uh, it's the not parent, always about like you know trying to burn the house down. Right, <laughs> parental involvement is so important mm. for the child. Bottom line, you know. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that, that's I think that's the biggest challenge. Yeah. yeah. Do you know if there are any programs in place for parental involvement? I mean, is there any active programs that the school has? Oh yeah. I you know at our elementary campuses, you know I believe that each each elementary campus has a PTO, PTA, you mm-hmm. know organizations where parents you know can you know volunteer. Uh, I know when. You know, my girls were at elementary. 
they had the uh, the watchdog uh as a watchdog program mm-hmm. you know where you wear this orange vest and you just got to volunteer and just kind of go on campus and uh you know watch over the kids you yeah know, kind of as that was before you know we had campus officers on you know our elementary campuses but uh mm-hmm. Oh, there, there, there's plenty of opportunity for parents to get engaged. You know, at our high school levels, we've got numerous booster clubs, uh, you know, that, you know, that's how a lot of parents, you know, get involved there. So a lot of stuff. That's oh, absolutely. Good. Okay. And we have some, you know, some different committees and things like that. that the board has like our uh, district, uh, our DLAC uh, committee. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I think we have some, uh, when we were going through our bond practice, you know, there was a lot of, you uh, uh, citizens that were able to participate you know in the uh, development of the bond we're very open and transparent about like what what we needed okay. uh, and this uh this committee definitely helped lay a lay a map out you know for for us at the board to feel very confident you know that we would uh we'd be able to get, get this bat this bond passed and okay. it was very successful in that so there's a, multiple ways i think to be and was engaged. the bond specifically for the construction of new schools or? Oh, yeah. Well, we had two propositions. You know, the state requires, you know, that certain facilities uh, to be separated out. Uh, so if we had any mm-hmm. type of athletic facility to be built, uh, which was needed, you know, that it has to be in a separate proposition. So okay. there have been a lot of districts that have, you know, they've wow. had failed bonds because, you know, somebody doesn't feel that, you know, this new facility is needed or mm-hmm. turf's not needed, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, you know, our one of our uh, big bond objectives, uh, New Caney High School has, you know, facilities that are, you know, across the freeway. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with the traffic in the area that's, you know, considerably increased and having oh, yeah. our kids having to transport every day back between those, you know, two facilities, it was important to get all of New Caney High School's facilities on New Caney High School property. I got you. And, uh, you know, that's going to be a successful deal. You know, we're working on that, uh, you know, quickly uh, to do that, you know, for our student safety. But, um, you know, it, it was one of those things that's needed. It's not just a, yeah. it's not just a want. I got you. So, okay. uh, but like I said, you know, we had a, a, a great bond passage. We are, we got a number of schools, property and things uh, to acquire, uh, to build schools, uh, mm-hmm. so, and I will say that we've managed, uh, our, our financially, we've managed our money very well, uh, you know, over the, the past few years, done such a great job, you know, we're sitting with a four month reserve, you know, which, uh, it That's is great. great. We've got a triple A rating. That's great. You know, bond rating. We got great interest rates on our bond, but, uh, our finance team has just done such a great job, um, uh, and, you know, there's a lot of other districts that I know that are not in our situation. Yeah. They're adopting deficit budgets. We're adopting, <laughs> yeah. you know, balanced budget. Right. We're still able to, you know, give our teachers uh, increases, uh, you know, u- using the money appropriately. And okay. um, so I, I'll say that that's been a, uh, a great deal. Yeah, and I believe in retention. You know, it's hard when you have a large turnover rate and you're constantly trying to, to acclimate new teachers and things like that. It's, it's better to try to retain them and, and uh, you know, keep them around. And that way you have, I think, just a smoother school year. Teacher you know, retention post-COVID has become so much uh, more difficult. Oh, you know, sure. Everything blew yeah. up at that time. <clears throat> yeah, there's, there, there's so many uh, It so changed many the way we work in mm-hmm. this country, not just – in the school system itself, but almost everywhere. Yeah. You know, it just, it really did. You know, it, it, it's some of, of the, you know, some of the things that teachers are, you know, having to, I guess, uh, address or to, uh, you know, to deal with is, is it, kids that were uh, all really a kind of across the country they've come in, you mm-hmm. know, and, and so in other places, we were, I think, you know, kind of blessed here in Texas not to be out as long. And I know at New Caney ISD, we got back as soon as we could. Right. But, uh, you know, th- these kids are dealing with multiple issues uh, from being just left out of school, you know, over a year, just mm-hmm. having, like, those social interactions. So, uh, Yeah, it's got to be tough. Yeah. yeah. I can imagine it would be. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about tax rate a little bit. So you guys are actually uh, – we have a less tax rate in mm-hmm. Caney than, than other places in the state. And how have you all managed to do that and still increase funding and – 
So yeah, we've uh, we've actually I think it was uh, our, our last board meeting about two weeks ago. Um, just a uh, our effective tax rate, you know, is uh, one dollar uh, twenty five mm-hmm. is what it is. So and it's a uh, yeah, hundred dollar really property bad. valuation. Yeah, that's not bad. No, it, it's actually it's down. It's a decrease in point one eight five five cents. And um, you know, it, it a lot of it has to do with some you know the growth in the area of uh, it's not just residential. You know, I think this mm-hmm. is, I think we're rolling into year two of actually not being a property poor district. Well, that's uh, great. <laughs> a lot of that I has to do with that. the right mix. I understand, yeah. yeah. Well, you got to have the right mix, you know, of like the your business, your residentials, mm-hmm. the type of residentials that you have, um, you know, and homes and developments and things like that. So uh, that plays a part in it, but it also, you know, what, what we uh, as a board, you know, do with you know choose to approve like on our finance side the financial side that's been instrumental as well as how uh, we've been successful financially sure. yeah just running a good business mm-hmm. you know i mean if you've got a four-month reserve and yeah there were things yeah. that you know that we were going to that were talked about being on the bond but we were actually you know able to pay for some things like at a general fund mm-hmm. I promise you there's districts that just you know all around the state that are, right they're not doing that and yeah and i know that other places that have experienced high growth like that they mm-hmm. haven't reduced their tax rate they've just tried to capitalize upon that mm-hmm. and uh, they just don't run as smooth you know, so at least I feel like we have it's a tough people, situation you know? to be in, you know, because yeah. students arrive, you know, well before, excuse me, they arrive well before your tax dollars ever get here, a year mm-hmm. before, yeah. you know, and if you're trying to open new schools, you're having to staff a full school before that money ever even arrives. Right. So it's a, it's a, it's definitely a difficult challenge. Yeah. I would think it would be. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. And so um, the other thing that we had discussed prior is, you had kind of championed putting together some committees, and one of those being the finance committee. And yeah, it sounds committees like the, in general. Yeah, and it sounds like the finance committee is what's been responsible for, for uh, you know, the great management of the dollars. Yeah, our our uh, administrate like the financial team, like in our administration, is just. Uh, I believe they've actually won some awards this last year. Uh, you know, for how well we've done, we've uh, passed numerous audit, like clear audits. Uh, have done just a they've done just a phenomenal job, but. As far as in the question or the uh, comment around the uh, committees, mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, it was something I really wanted uh, for us to start to entertain that individual board members could, you know, apply a focus, you know, whether it be from our own professional, you know, careers to where we could, could really kind of dig in with some of the other committee, like the groups, mm-hmm. uh, and, and begin to uh, bring that back to the rest of the board and you know, I think that the finance committee, we've, we've, we've done a great job. Beth Prickle and I, you know, pers- serve on this, uh, mm-hmm. on the finance committee. Uh, and it has, it's been very informative, uh, and very helpful, you know, for the board, uh, to definitely understand, you know, as we've, uh, you know, grown over the years. Yeah. And that's really a good way to do it because then that way you're using the strengths of all the individuals mm-hmm. involved and, and by creating committees, all you're doing is opening the channel for new and and better ideas than yeah, you would absolutely. get out of a whole board where maybe you have the majority of the people who may not understand what you're talking about. Right. So yeah, that's, that's the better way to do it. I think. Yeah. yeah. I, I particularly, you know, I serve on that cause I work in, you know, corporate finance, finance procurement. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's applicable for me and it's somewhere, you know, rather in, you know, if we're going to go talking about, uh, construction, Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm only going to be able to, you know, provide so much guidance, but, right. uh, and I lean on my other board members that, you know, that have, that are in those professions mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, they can, they can provide an opinion and, uh, you know, we, we use that. Yeah. Especially now because the, the design and construction of schools are, is completely different than what we had maybe even 15 years ago yeah. with the whole active shooter thing and all that. Mm-hmm. Now schools have to be zi- designed a certain way so we can get kids out. And, yeah. So it's not a threat and things like that. Speaking yeah. of that, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the uh, the school system police, if we can. The mm-hmm. police yeah, department. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't remember how many officers you had. I had interviewed Beth Prickroll mm-hmm. maybe two years ago. She was our one hundredth show, by the way. Oh, all right. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Um, but we talked about um, the school police system, and and I believe at that time there was one officer per school. Is that still the case? So we've actually increased that, you know, and I know that the legislature has recently put a lot of school districts where they're all scrambling to get people hired. Mm-hmm. We were well, 
uh, well ahead of that. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, our board has actually had a plan for the last three years that we wanted to see, like that officer on every campus. Okay. And we have uh, we started to grow that year over year to where now we we do have an officer on every, every elementary campus. Uh, we have we're now with two resource officers per high school. Okay. And uh, some additional, I mean, not necessarily be officers, but support, uh, you know, to our uh, to each of the campuses. Okay. Like security officers. Right. Uh, so, yeah, we've uh, we, we've definitely done a great job staying ahead of that you know safety is you know a, a huge uh, now i'm not going to say it's an issue it's, it's it's an important factor yeah it sure is and i know that the the police department for uh, new Caney independent school system is uh they're top notch mm-hmm. you know they're top notch and from what i hear they're highly technical and and got a lot going on so we have some great we, we definitely thing. have some great officers for sure well yeah. i would hope they'd be doing a whole lot more uh, tactical type training specifically for that and i bet they are um what doors are locked and unlocked and when and where you can go in and how they're going to get a mass group out you know mm-hmm. kind of thing without letting all the doors be open at one time and and who's in charge of that and that kind of thing you ought to go back and watch uh, the porter high school samsung team from two years ago like the uh the invention that they they came up with it, it it's it's related to that and it's really? it's phenomenal yeah they won the national uh, matter of fact they won it again this year i think uh, two or three three years running they've won this national competition with samsung but you know related to security it was it was mind-blowing it was really cool a security device or something yeah it's a security device that really? actually trigger it, it it triggers only off of like gun flash like at certain decibels and it, <laughs> really? it basically lit leds down a hall uh-huh. Like it started turning red, like the closer that that actual sound was, and they. So it was like an early warning system. Uh, yeah, actually, it, it was That's, a directional. Wow. You know, like don't go this way because shooting coming from this way, and it would be green. Like once you know, as it got further away. Hmm. So it That's was. That's cool. And so would these really LEDs cool. be on the floor or the ceiling or? It, the competition, like basically, just like uh, applies a concept, mm-hmm. you know, and they had put them in like the hallway, like the top of the lockers or whatever, just for the. The competition. Uh, Man, that's the smart. Videos. It's <laughs> these kids are just. Have you ever brilliant. been inside of a building when there's gunfire? I, I don't think that I. I mean, other than a gun range, like an indoor gun range. Well, I have. Yeah. And when not, it wasn't bad gunfire, but it was a training exercise. Mm-hmm. You can't tell nah. where it's coming no, from. No, it's just bouncing at yeah. you from mm-hmm. all directions. Yeah. yeah, and it actually sounds like more than one shot. Right. It's crazy, and so a device like wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's it, really it's pretty good. funny. You have to go back and look at that. Yeah, I'll check, check that out definitely. <laughs> Yeah, for it sure. Really neat. Okay, so um, average voter guy lives in New Caney, not really sure who to vote for. Where would that individual go to learn more about Craig Mixon? Yeah, I, I have a uh, a Facebook page. Okay. Uh, it's specific to you know uh, the campaign myself. Uh, you know who I am. Uh, they can learn definitely learn more about me. Okay. You know from there. Any speaking engagements coming up that you know of? None that I have the plan just yet. Um, okay. Doesn't mean that there won't be. Yeah, yeah. Usually there's a forum or two. I think once it gets a little bit closer. Absolutely. Um, okay. Any closing remarks or anything like that? You know, I, I definitely uh, appreciate one. I appreciate you having me on here. No this problem. is uh, phenomenal. I love love the new studio. Congratulations. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank yeah. you. And, Great. Uh, Thanks love, for coming. Love what you guys do for you know do for the area for yeah. sure. Uh, but. Uh, you know, I just asked, you know, the you know the people come out and support me, uh, continue, you know, through another term. Uh, you know, I'd love to serve this community as their, their voice and be the representation of our students and staff. So There you go. Well, I appreciate having you on and taking the time out because I know you're busy putting signs out and such. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's been good having you on. This has been a good conversation. Absolutely. And, again, I learned something. So I, that's the thing that I love most about doing the show is – I get a chance to learn something, and I can go and research a little bit more and, and become a subject matter expert. On there you go. <laughs> like you learn you're never riding in my car ever again. <laughs> See, that's it. <laughs> I learned that today. I learned that today. Absolutely. All right, well, there you have it, guys. Craig Mixon, he is running for a fourth term. Check him out. Go to his Facebook page. Uh, learn a little bit about him. Keep an eye open for the forums. And when you vote, don't vote for a name or a number or a slogan or even a party, you want to vote for an individual and you want to vote for somebody whose thoughts and ideas are in alignment with the same thoughts and ideas that you have about where you want things to go. 
These school board races are the most important ones in this county. Um, you know, you can get to sheriffs and judges and all that, and everybody makes a big deal out of that. But brass tacks, these are our children. This is our future. And if you really want to do some good, make your vote count. Craig, thanks for having you aboard. Hey, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Not a problem. For Mark Hogan, I'm Hank Vatt. This is Hank's Thank Tank, and we're gone. <laughs>